Since the early 20th century, concept cars have tested the boundaries of what is possible for a motor vehicle. They're a way for automotive designers and engineers to present to the public their idea for how a car might look or perform in the near or sometimes far future. Concept car designs are frequently daring and sometimes wildly impractical. Many concepts are not intended for production, with their designers focused more on reinventing the wheel than on following a proven formula. That's the case with the vehicle we'll be looking at today on the Peterson Automotive Museum's YouTube channel. I'm Autumn Neary, and this is the 1933 Dimaxion. So how did this wild looking vehicle come to be? Well, to understand that, first we need to take a look at the car's creator, Richard Buckminster Fuller. Buckminster Fuller, or Bucky as he was fondly known, was an architect, writer, designer, inventor, philosopher, and futurist, best known for patenting and popularizing the lattice shell structure known as the geodesic dome. Born in Massachusetts in 1895, Bucky came from a family of strong individualists inclined toward activism and public service. He was twice enrolled at Harvard and twice expelled for poor performance and excessive socializing. He then spent two years in the Navy where he developed an interest in engineering. Later, he partnered with his uncle on a concrete enterprise that ultimately failed. That failure, along with the death of his young daughter and serious financial difficulties, sent him into a deep depression. For several years, he was effectively a recluse, having little to no contact with anyone. He even contemplated suicide. Ultimately, however, he came to the realization that he had a responsibility to use his experiences and his intellect in the service of others. He resolved to embark on, quote, an experiment to find what a single individual could contribute to changing the world and benefiting all humanity. One of Buckminster's lifelong interests was human housing. His Dimaxion house was conceived in the 1920s as a mass-produced, affordable, easily transportable, and environmentally efficient home. Dimaxion was a combination of three of Bucky's favorite words, dynamic, maximum, and tension. The main idea behind the word Dimaxion was to maximize efficiency, or basically to do more with less. The Dimaxion house used tension suspension from a central column or mast, was intended to be sold for the price of a Cadillac, and could be shipped worldwide in its own metal tube. The round house was also heated and cooled by natural means, made its own power, and was earthquake and storm proof. The interior rooms were modular and could be made bigger or smaller according to different needs. The idea was that the house could be leased and paid off with five years of monthly payments, just like a car. And speaking of cars, that brings us to this, the Dimaxion vehicle, this being prototype number two. When Bucky looked to revolutionize the mobility industry, this was the result a three-wheeled, Zeppelin-shaped, mid-rear engine car with rear-wheel steering. The vehicle was intended to transport 11 passengers at up to 90 miles per hour while getting 30 miles per gallon of gas. Like many concepts, the vehicle was not intended for mass production. It was an exercise that translated his Dimaxion principles to mobility. The precursor to the project were some sketches that Bucky published in an architectural magazine, which envisioned a machine that could do it all. It would be able to travel by land, air, and sea. It was called 4D. 4D stands for four-dimensional, a term used in physics and mathematics, referring to length, width, depth, and time. Development of the Dimaxion happened during the Great Depression, a time when so many people lost everything, while a few others became insanely wealthy. On the wealthy end of the spectrum were the Pearsons from Philadelphia, and they were willing to finance Buckminster Fuller's project by offering the Maverick inventor $5,000, about $120,000 today. Not exactly pocket change when literally half of the country was facing severe economic hardship. When it came to assembling the Dimaxion team, a thousand people applied for 27 jobs. One of the successful applicants was naval architect Starling Burgess. 
Rajesh, inventor of the first Delta Wing aircraft, was invaluable to the project, but skeptical the vehicle would ever fly. He was right, but it's impossible not to notice how the Dimaxian car looks like a plain fuselage that skipped wing assembly. Another essential member of the team was sculptor Isamo Noguchi. He created wind test models of the vehicle to help determine its teardrop shape. Everything on this vehicle is streamlined, aimed to penetrate the wind similar to a bullet. The choice of the rear steering was derived from Bucky's study of fluid dynamics and the movements of fish and birds. Lightness was the name of the game when it came to constructing the vehicle. And with that in mind, we find a wooden frame wrapped in an aluminum body. A Ford flathead V8 engine is mounted closer to the rear steering wheel, but the vehicle has front wheel drive. All in all, three Dymaxion prototypes were built. Prototype one was in an accident on its way to, or more practically almost at the gates of, the 1933 Chicago World's Fair. Eager for a closer look at what newspapers had branded a freak car, a Chicago South Park commissioner drove too close and crashed into the Demaxian prototype. The driver of the Demaxian was killed in that accident. Prototypes two and three were majorly revised from the original prototype including a lighter three-frame chassis, central periscope providing rearward vision, larger side windows, recessed headlights, and a roof-mounted stabilizer with a rear-facing exhaust outlet. Prototype three was lost and possibly scrapped in the 1950s, leaving this as the only remaining Dymaxion prototype. It's currently at the Peterson Museum as part of our exhibition, Eyes on the Road, Art of the Automotive Landscape, which runs through November 3rd, 2024. Bucky had hoped to display the Demaxion at the 1934 New York Auto Show, but pressure from Chrysler locked him out, literally. Not to be deterred, Buckminster parked prototype number two right by the front door of the show and got more attention than he might have on the exhibit floor. Prototype 2 was initially purchased by Alfred Williams, manager of the Gulf Refining Company, and it was driven cross-country in a nationwide advertising promotion of aircraft fuel. Eventually, this car too was lost until its rediscovery on a farm in 1968 by a group of Arizona State University engineering students. The farmer, who had bought it some years earlier for a dollar, was using it as a chicken coop and sold it now for $3,000. It was acquired by casino magnate Bill Hara, whose extensive collection of exotic automobiles eventually became Reno's National Automobile Museum. One exciting thing we're going to do today is to examine the interior of the vehicle. At the front, we find an extremely minimalist series of gauges clustered in a Burlwood dashboard. Burlwood was long associated with luxurious interiors and its use here offers a stark contrast to the Dymaxion's spacious yet scant interior and cloth seats. Over the years, Bucky's design reached legendary status, and there are a few copies out there. A few years ago, journalist Dan Neal and collector Jeff Lane drove a replica for the Wall Street Journal and noticed that the feel was nautical and that even under 40 miles per hour, the stability was bad. The rear steering can also produce another undesired nautical trait, seasickness. That's because with rear steering, you get the sensation of the ground almost being swept from under you. Surprisingly, Buckminster himself didn't seem to experience this instability or sense of motion sickness. In the 1960s, he had this to say about the vehicle. It wasn't designed just to be an automobile at all. She was so extraordinarily stable. My center of gravity was very, very low for the first vehicle that ever had the center of gravity forward of the midpoint of the wheelbase. It did prove to be a very good vehicle and did have very high efficiency. I had 11 passengers. I averaged over 22 miles to the gallon. Sometimes I got as much as 30 with 11 passengers. That is very, very high. The front steered cars with the kingpins can only steer up to 34 degrees angle. My rear rudder post, I could turn so I could give you 90 degrees rudder if I wanted. 
So that's our look at the 1933 Dymaxion Prototype 2. I hope you get a chance to see this unique piece of automotive history here in Los Angeles. The car permanently resides in Reno, Nevada at the National Automobile Museum. You can see the Dymaxion House prototype at the Henry Ford in Dearborn, Michigan. I'm Autumn, thanks for watching. See you next time.